All right, so today I have Miss DJ Riri out of Florida right now. Um, she's a DJ and she came to help me out on my show. This is one of my first interviews. Um, and I'm glad to have her on my show. So, Miss Riri, I want you to know that I'm glad to have you. And would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is DJ Riri, R E R E. You can find that on all platforms. I am an international celebrity DJ. I've been DJing for about 10 years, born and raised in Nebraska. I moved to Miami in 2012, and I have had a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs, but um, I've been DJing from cruise ships to rolling loud stages to touring to clubs to weddings, whatever. Now I have my own company, and I hire other DJs to, to, to groom them and get them into those higher uh, premier events and stuff. So that's pretty much all I do now, you know, thanks to COVID. And and travel as much as I used to anymore. So I'm um, doing really well here, and I do a lot of online Zoom parties as well. So I entertain people um, all kinds of ways. I host, I do everything. So that's just kind of a little, little bit of what I do. But if you guys want to follow me on IG and stuff, DJ R E R E, and you'll see everything. Everything. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just woke up, by the way. So that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, one moment, Miss Riri. Let me see. Let me see we, are, we are two minutes. All right, so, um, Miss Riri, that part, I heard everything that you said, but, um, it, every time you moved, it was going in and out. Um, if I can ask yeah. you, yes, ma'am, if I can ask you, uh, if you don't mind, can you, uh, please stay still a little bit? I don't mean to be disrespectful. Um, but every, I want to make sure your face gets seen too, but your voice get heard. I want your voice to be heard, number one. I can hear all your voice, but every time you was moving, it was going in and out. But, um... Okay. Uh, like the, the audio? Uh, no, ma'am. The audio is perfect. I'm talking about your video. Like, whenever you was moving, it stuck, and then it froze, and then it paused. Like, you know? It just kept... Your face kept... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. I'll the video. I'll stay still. I'll do it again. All right, um, all right, so do it again? Uh, if you want to. If no, I don't. My phone's going to die. That's why I'm trying to. Yes, no, okay, okay. All right, I got you. <clears throat> all right, so, Miss oh, Reed. I got you. The next step I want to Yes, ma'am. It's okay. It's okay. All right, so, Miss Riri, my next question for you is, what are your what motivated you to become a dj or what got you started becoming a dj started in college i started um doing house parties but i was only in like gonna be a producer so uh I, I was i wanted to make music and i wanted to do mashups i was really big into mashups and blends but not on a dj level on like a program technology level um, so I would make mixtapes for house parties, and um, my sorority loved it. Everybody loved them. My house parties were great. And um, I started to ask to buy the CDs and all that stuff, and it just became like people really enjoyed the music. They, don't give, they just enjoyed what I was bringing them, and I was introducing them to new music, and it's crazy. So one day they were like, look, since you got all the, like, the hot stuff, you should just DJ it. I'm like, yeah. You know, because DJing for girls, for for one, wasn't really big. And I, I went to school at Iowa State University. Um, so um, it wasn't really a big thing. So I was never really thought about it. You know, nobody really did. The DJ was always in the back in the corner somewhere. Nobody gave, gave a shit about the DJ. But, like, now, um, they really, my sorority really, really pushed me to, to, to do it. They, they kind of annoyed me with it more so. Um... So maybe they saw something in me that I did not see. But um, it is because of those girls um, that I said, okay, fine. So I went on there and I learned on YouTube. I YouTubed a lot before I even thought about it. And I started DJing on the computer. So um, I'm pretty good on the computer anyway. So I was DJing parties on the computer. I didn't even have a set of decks or anything until like two years later after I graduated. Yes, ma'am. That's cool. Crazy. That's yeah, cool. That's how I started. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Um, 
when you first okay <clears throat> all right so miss riri my next question for you is what are your plans for the next five years and what are your plans for the next 10 years for the next five years for sure getting the business up and running like i was doing before march um i have a business called remix events that's where i have a team a dj's team of production assistance team of uh, lighting and sound we do we do any event you can think of like we'll take care of it right so i'm really really focused on that because this market is mostly like a male dominated only guys you see doing events and girls do balloons or whatever but i, I want to really make this like no nah, girls can dj girls can be a part of the production team so it's not all girls it's, it's just ran by me you know me but i got a an amazing group. I got photographers, videographers, so I really want to get that business going within the next, you know, five to actually within the next year to, to, to five years. So that is my number one goal for the next five years. For the next 10 years is obviously I really want to build the DJ Riri brand as well. So I really want to get into radio and do more touring. But we'll see because I miss that life. I know I, I just was in it this March, but I want to go back like I, it's weird staying in one spot for too long so i really want to get back to that and really just become this mega <laughs> dj yes ma'am so yes that's ma what i want that's cool that's cool um my next question for you is what is your message to the future generation of women message is if this is something you really want to do, practice and study and appreciate the craft. Because without that passion, without that that motivation to just learn about the, the industry that you're in, you're going to suck. And I'm dead serious. Because I don't want people to go in and just play music. you got to you got to play music. you got to feel it, you know? And that's what really sets you apart from anybody. And, um, you know, obviously not just for females, but for just everybody. But for females, you know, just keep in there because there's not a lot of us. And if nobody's going to teach you, nobody's going to help you out, then find a way on your own. And I hate to say it, but reach out or do YouTube or something because that's how I – unfortunately, that's how I did it. And – if I could help somebody out, I would definitely do that. I really want to start like a DJ academy for for young girls and boys. So I'm hoping to to get into that too with the with the uh, events uh, company. I want to start grooming young kids so that by the time they're 18, 19, they got this. <laughs> so that's what I want to do because it's hard. Art, especially when you're from the hood and stuff you can't afford all that stuff but you really want to do it and you know just having somebody there if you if you do have somebody there hold on to them because it's hard especially now a lot of the older ogs whatever they don't they don't want to give it up they don't want to help they don't want to pass the torch and it discourages people like me who's coming up and all i got was a bunch of hate and you know if i wasn't a strong person willed person i would have quit i would have quit before i started so, um, you know, you know, just please have your passion because that passion will be the one thing that will never go away. And that's going to be the thing that fuels you regardless of everything else. If you have a will, there's going to be a way. That's it. So have the passion, you know, have the love and appreciation for the art. And, and that's it. You'll be fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just interviewed a lady two day, three days ago. Her name is DJ Tina Z. Miss DJ Tini Z, she's in Massachusetts. Um, she is trying to find somebody who she could collab with. She said, "Yes, I've been wanting to collab with somebody, but nobody. I haven't been able to get in contact with anyone." Um, so yeah, if you ever need a DJ who you would like to do something with, uh, please let me know. I have a couple of them. But yeah, um, my okay, yeah, no, that's yes, ma'am. Um, that's what's up. I usually do that. Like a lot of people reach out to me, you know, and I try to do my best, but you know you got to be careful too. There's a lot of people who are leechers, and and uh, that's that's like I said, you got to appreciate and respect the craft, you know, because a lot of people do give their all to people, and they still don't care. They take all that information and they just, you know what I mean? 
So Absolutely. Then, so, I, so there's a lot of people that I've actually done that with. I've actually taught a lot of people, and then some they'll go off with it, and they don't even like say thank you or or anything. And it's just it, it's a little sad, but you know, I guess that's the way the game goes. You know, there's no emotions in this game. But um, so you know, I would love to clever. I always collaborate. I'm I'm always working with people, especially since I have my company now. <laughs> I'm looking for good people, man. Like good people. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I'm gonna say this, Miss mm-hmm. Riri. Um, anybody who I send to you, they're gonna be positive, unless I tell you like I don't know who this person is, but they wanna talk to you. Yeah, but if I personally recommend someone to you, it, it mm-hmm. they won't. They never told me anything disrespectful, cause I don't play that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no man, we don't tolerate no type of disrespect. No man. Um, yeah. when I post your video, I'm gonna have all. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna keep it up here forever. It ain't it ain't never going down. Anytime somebody say anything about music in Florida, I'm gonna say, hey, I know a DJ right now. Uh, if you if you need events, I promise you that I'm gonna try to. That's all I do is bring people together. That's all I do is bring people together. But um, yeah, I apologize for talking so long. Um, South Florida, so South Florida, yes, ma'am. No, we good, we good. Yes, ma'am. Shout out to South Florida. Florida ain't nothing like the rest of Florida. We in Miami. We in Miami. It ain't nothing like the rest of Florida. <laughs> so we down south. For real, for real. Y'all at the bottom. For real. Y'all at the bottom. For real. Shout out Miami, man. Shout out Florida. I love it, man. For real. I love it. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, my, my last thing I'm going to say is there's another lady in Florida right now. Her name is Ms. Reese. She's a YouTuber. And yeah, she doing her thing. Mm-hmm. Like, she she in Miami right now. She okay. doing her thing. But yeah, um, I'm gonna check her out too. Ms. Riri, my next question for you is, um, are, what would you like to tell your future self 20 years from now? 20 years? Oh, my moly, I'm going to be old as hell. Uh, well, you know, keep going because the point is, the business, I think, I want the business to start running itself so good that all I got to do is sit there and write checks. So, you know, so my future self is like, yo, keep going and keep pushing for this. And I can get bigger and I can compete with the bigger boys. I can do this, but I have this. So that would be the advice I would give to myself is don't stop, get it, get it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, my next question for my next it's okay. My next question for you is, um, are there any shout outs that you would like to make to your friends or to your family? Shout outs. Yeah, shout outs, of course. Um, shout out. So I want to shout out uh flip this flag okay love them i want to shout out to everybody from omaha nebraska who who has supported me through this journey because they were there when i first started and i really sucked and they still believed in me and uh even when i sucked you know i was still pretty good <laughs> not gonna lie but i sucked for my standards you know um and every day i just want to keep getting better so shout out to omaha Shout out to, to uh, Carnival Cruise Line. Shout out to Princess Cruise Line. Shout out to Royal Caribbean. Shout out to, um, you know, all the banquet halls down here. Dude, everybody. Shout out to <laughs> so many people. <laughs> um, you know, shout out to my fam. Shout out to my fr- Like, everybody. They know who they are. Like, I call on people every day. So just shout out to everybody, especially everybody here in 305 that's, that supports me. Um, all my party boat friends, um, everybody. Like, there's no specific person because I love them all. Everybody, everybody always, they know who they are. And thank you, and thank you, um, you know, to know too, Tony, for, for, for the interview. Thank you. Shout out to you. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You can come back on my show anytime. Um, how is it? I'm sorry to go off subject, but how is it performing on a cruise? Like, I've never even been on a cruise. Like, how is it for DJ in there? You got to. Everybody needs to go on a cruise. <laughs> Everybody goes on a cruise. I've been doing cruises for four years straight. I've been, literally been to almost every continent except for two. 
So um, I've done so much. And like, it's a party every day <laughs> for me. So you get off the cruise, right? I stay on the cruise. The next group that gets on, same shit every day. <laughs> Some I of could, my cruises are three days, some of my cruises are a week, some of my cruises are two weeks, some of my cruises are 28 days. I could do the same. So, like, cruising in general for me is, like, fun. It is fun. Like, I love it. I love it. I, 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 I was cruising for four years, when I say four years straight, I would come home for, like, a week or two, and I'm back out again. Oh, I and could do that. That's how much I would cruise. I was never in the country long enough. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you and meet people from all over the world. I have friends, honey, from Romania, from Egypt. I have friends in uh, Fiji, Barcelona, Spain, uh, Taiwan. A really big following in Taiwan. Um, <laughs> Japan, I still uh, Instagram them dudes that cut my hair at the barbershop. Like, yeah, Hong Kong, come on. Uh, the St. Martin. Um, I still got people I talk to all the day from Martinique, um, Jamaica, you name it, California, Mexico. Um, every day is a party, honey. Like, I'm a guest entertainer, so I wear regular clothes. I go to the pool when I want to. I drink my cocktail. I go to the wine and cheese bar. I do whatever I want. I'm a guest. I go to the buffet whenever I want. Whenever we're docked in a port, I get off. And go parasailing, or go ziplining, or go to a cooking class, or swim with dolphins. <laughs> do whatever. I do whatever. I love it. I love what? it. Yeah, I know, right? It, that was. I get paid to do that. Funny stuff, huh? People get paid to do that. I have to make sure people have a good time, right? So you know, if they offer me a bottle. Some people pay me over a big ass bottle of champagne. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Man, that's yeah. so cool. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, you know. That's so, like, cool. So, um, like March, actually, my last my last cruise was in Alaska, and uh, I did a glacier walk. They took us up like twenty thousand feet, and we got to walk on a glacier, um, and saw a hole. The glacier had a hole in it, and this humongous waterfall, like two hundred feet. Pure blue. It was amazing, honey. Amazing. Amazing. Dang. Amazing. See, that's what's up, man. That's cool. Yeah, what can you say, huh? That's cool. Yeah, so that's cool. I really love my job. I'm going to um, plug my phone in. Um, I'm still doing my interview, darling. Well, I think this is the first time I ever heard this before. This is the first time I ever heard this. Uh, Oh my gosh, like, bro, like, no, like, cruises every day, getting it, that's straight hustling, you don't play, Miss Riri, you don't yeah, play, like, um, yeah, they, like, like, they would call me, I remember I was doing, like, two cruises, two cruise ships, I would, honey, I DJed on the biggest cruise ship in the world, I DJed on, like, Oasis, I don't know if you know anything about cruises, but they would fit 8,000 passengers, and uh, I would have to be there for them every day. You know what I mean? Ms. Riri, I'm going to say this during an interview. I'm, I'm sorry for being so unprofessional, but hey, you need an interviewer? You need a cameraman? Like. <laughs> well, I, I usually always do. I always need something. Somebody for something. Um, you know, I usually bring people on there for free. Um, I usually have, you know, whoever wants to come on there. You know, so I was always. I'm always, I always bring people. Man, no, Miss Riri, I don't mean like that. I'm, man, I'm for real. I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not cruising anymore because of the pandemic, honey. But. All right, so, Miss Riri, my next question for you is: What type of content do you post on your Instagram, and what type of content do you post on your YouTube? I need to post on my YouTube a little bit more often. But usually my YouTube will be like recaps of my events and stuff. Or if I'm like really promoting like a product that I really like, then I'll I'll do like an unboxing video or something like that. But my YouTube is mostly recaps of videos so you can see 
how I rock the party. So a lot of DJs say, oh, that party was lit, and it really wasn't, you know? So, like, usually my videos capture the moment. And, um, oh, my goodness, hold on. Take your time. time. Take your time. So, um, and then on my Instagram, I just... I post whatever. It's the same thing. You know, on my Instagram, I post a lot of um, pictures of me <laughs> and just pictures of or flyers of what I'm doing, anything I got coming up, um, events that I've done, and um, just fun videos, silly videos. I'm very, I'm very um, v- vibrant, so that's on my Instagram. When you go on the Instagram, you're going to be like, oh, wow, <laughs> look at this girl. You know, so, um, yes, ma'am. you know, I don't post a lot of dumb pictures. I usually let people see, like, when I was traveling, I posted, like, all the time, like, hey, I'm in China, you know, or and people loved it. They were like, Juan, you're, where are you at? Like, that was becoming a thing, like, where in the world is Riri? And so <laughs> people really was tuning in to find out where I was the next place. They're like, you was just in, you know, where they say, you were just in St. Thomas. Now you're over here in Puerto Rico, like, so people really like that. So, I, and I post a lot of dog stories. So people really be following up on, you know, the stories like, hey, whatever happened to that dog? But I post a lot of things like that, a lot of personal stuff. <clears throat> That's cool. That's cool. Um, my next question for you is, <clears throat> okay. Oh, and first I want to say, yeah, you you be fresh on Instagram, Miss Riri. You be fresh. Um. <laughs> One time you had some shades that I seen. I like them blue shades you had. They was um they had a little fire on them. I that was I ain't that was like I don't know. They they was hard though. You know it was like real skinny and small. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wore those um for Halloween. I was like a disco diva. Yeah. And so I wore those like they looked like nineteen seventy glasses. They were fun. I like those. I like those. You, you be fresh though, Miss Missouri fresh. I be wearing some silly outfits. I know. I be. My 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 sense of fashion is kind of all over the place. Hey, but hey, like you say, you make it work. <laughs> hey, it don't matter yeah, what I what it is, it. No matter how you rock it, for real. All right, so Miss Riri, my next question for you is: How do you feel women are represented in the world? It depends on what your world is, to be honest, because everybody has a different point of view about everything. Um, your upbringing, your background, regionally where you are. So I'm in Miami, but um, women are represented the way that they put themselves out there to be. And, you know, so to, so it is what it is with that because at the, at, at the same time, you cannot, I cannot say it's bad because to somebody it might be amazing, you know? So I think the way that we're being represented, I love it. You know, I think there's more of us, especially our vice president, you know, and especially, you know, all these female um, artists really coming out here and being themselves. I hope they're being themselves. They're probably being exaggerated form of themselves. But, like, I just love it. I don't care. As long as they're making money and, and you know, spreading good vibes, do it. Because I can't tell you how to be, and you can't tell me how to be. And if this is what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do. So um, <laughs> I'm all about everybody doing your own thing, as long as it's not hurting somebody, whatever. For real. <clears throat> all right, so, Ms. Riri, my next question for you is, do you believe police brutality is real, or do you think it's made up? What you thought? <laughs> of course it's real. It is real. I mean, even the police know it. <laughs> they know it. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you personally or do you know anyone personally who has had negative interactions with law enforcement? Duh. <laughs> Everywhere, all the time. Everybody. Uh, a um, lot of women yeah, on here say no. Me. No, me. For sure, me. I get pulled over. I remember I got pulled over. I was taking my dog from uh, Miami to Houston, and I don't know why they pulled me over. The cop was actually in front of me, and he slowed down to get behind me. And then he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, going to Houston. Then he <laughs> started asking me all these questions, and he goes, why? I was like, because I'm going to Houston. 
And then he's like, can you start with the car? Da, da, da. And they searched the car. They took it apart. They had us on the side of the road for like an hour. They interviewed my friend who was helping me drive. I'm like, what the fuck are you? Inter- what, what are you doing? We're not even speeding. What are you doing? So they made us put everything back in the car. And then they even said, what's this dog? And it was horrible. And then, so we were outside for a good minute, a good minute. And then he goes, fine. There's nothing in the car, is it? I was like, besides all the shit you just took out? No. And so um, he was like, uh, he was asking me what I did for a living, like if I went to school. It was it was the most uncomfortable experience ever. And he had pulled me to the side, questioned me, pulled my friends to the side. And then they were like, well, the reason why we pulled you over because we saw you doing 10 miles over. But I was like, sir, I was in the passing lane. And I did that like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> like I was in the passing lane and then he goes well we're not going to write you a ticket so you're okay now I was like sir you, you can't write me a ticket I didn't do anything wrong for yeah. real so like but I didn't say that you can't talk back to the police right so I'm thinking in my head I'm like I just had to give him like that look like the fuck is all of this and it was it had to be like midnight at night and uh so that was that was one and then another one was some personal stuff but anyway um they were all equally bad but that one really pissed me off i was like are you kidding me <laughs> like i could see if i was doing something i was speeding or i or i was recklessly driving or you know i had just stolen something from walmart and you're chasing me okay but there was absolutely no reason for them to, to search the entire car, pull up the fucking, uh, the trunk, um, mat, everything, everything. And I was like, you know, what? so, um, it was just, yeah, I didn't smart. even beat, thank God. <laughs> Ain't that silly? I you gotta say, oh, thank God I didn't get beat up. For real. Um, yeah. My next question for you is, can you send a positive message to the negative members on law, of law enforcement on uh, treating us equally? Um, I don't know. Just don't do it. Like, don't do it. Like, treat people how you want to be treated. Obviously, you're the law, so all you do is enforce. But you have to protect and serve, and then you enforce the, you know, whatever the rules are at that time. But just uphold your job and uphold your, your, um you know your 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 values and whatever you sign whatever you sign that's what you need to do okay so you know i can't tell you how to do your job because everything is a situational um thing so i can understand if motherfuckers like clapping at you and just going off in your face you gotta do something right but at the same time you are the person with the badge so you have to be the bigger man all the time every time and you just, um, like I said, uphold the, the things that you sign and be a good person. Be a good person. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, my next question for you is, can you send a positive message to our brothers and our sisters on um, coming together? Um, when I was living in, um, in Roanoke, And over there, I I noticed that people were, and even here in Miami, people more so fight each other. They they always want to one up each other. Okay, sorry about that. (laughs) It's okay. So, um, so the one thing I would say that I've noticed about just growing up in, or not growing up, but just living in like um, Miami and um, and and Roanoke and stuff, everybody more so competed against each other, and um, they always wanted to be better than the next person I, I just hate the whole crabs in a barrel mentality but that's what we have and so if i ever were to spread positivity and a good message is we have got to come together and stop competing because and and everybody said it in every other race every other community they help each other these chinese folks they help each other these jewish folks they help each other the latins they help each other but we're the only people that I've noticed that are easy to kick somebody out, that are easy to, to help them that one good time, get it on, you know, video, and then they're out. 
Like we don't genuinely do things to help each other. And that's the one thing if I could wish for the whole world would be that. Let's really start doing some things and be a stronger community. Because right now everybody's laughing at us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Ms. Riri, my last question for you, well, no, my second to last question for you is, can you send a positive message to our black women around the world? Yeah, start coming together. You know, keep doing it, sis. As long as you're doing it with your heart and your passion, can nobody stop you? So, like I said, and like Mr. Luke said, don't stop, get it, get it. And make sure you bring your sister with you. You know what I mean? Like, let's work together. That's the that's the only, only how we're going to level. You know? You get on my shoulders, I get on your shoulders. We're going to get to the top. So, keep going. Have the passion. Have the will. Have the motivation. And it's going to come. I believe it. Where there's a will, there's a way. It will happen, no matter who you are. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Miss DJ Riri, my last question for you is, what would you do if you were the president? The president? Um, hi, there's so many things. But, <laughs> in which situation? Let's just say COVID, right? If I was the president and... The Senate came to me in the House, and they said, oh, da, 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 da. this is what I would say. Listen, if we're going to lock down everything, right, fine, let's lock it down. Let's have people be safe. But we need to give people stimuluses so that they can survive and they don't have to worry about going outside. So I think if we take care of the people, that we can get to work and do what we have to do as a nation so that we can control this situation. Because this is a real situation, and people really out here – fucking up in the head and just going crazy and oh my god oh my god oh my god uh, you know and so they're dying to get back to normalcy and you cannot do that this doesn't make sense like we're all gonna die stop it stop it so the reason why we're trying to get to normalcy because it's like oh you can't lock us down because we need to make money well how about we just give you some money for right now figure it out all right take a chill pill and and um let us get this under control so more people don't die and then carry on with life. That's what I would do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody just shut up and stop worrying. Jesus Christ. Like, you're going to be dragging it out. Oh my God. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, Miss Riri, I would like to tell you thank you for coming on my show. Is there anything, yes, ma'am, is there anything that I didn't ask you or anything that we didn't say that you would like to talk about? No, just, um, you know, thank you for having me. Again, my name is DJ Riri, R-E-R-E, and um, it's been a pleasure. Everybody, keep your head up. Seriously, keep your head up and keep the positivity. Keep the good vibes because people are watching and they have absolutely nothing else to do. So if they see you and they tune into you and they see the vibes you bring, they're going to remember this. Because this is a time nobody has been through. So it's how you react to these adverse situations to make them better for you. So that's the little thing I want to leave people with. Make everything better. If it's bad, do what you can to make it better. Absolutely. Thank you again, Ms. Riri, for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. Don't you so 